Hey everybody, this is Jim Flannery, I'm the women's basketball coach at Creighton. And uh, on this edition of the off season, I have uh, fifth year senior Jalen Agnew with me. Uh, I'm excited to see Jalen. I have not seen her in person since uh, we left Chicago over a month ago. And uh, so Jalen, I've been missing you. Um, my family's been missing you and uh, just, Catch me up on on what you've been up to over the last, now it's been four weeks. And yeah. don't tell me you've been studying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually have been studying. But um, besides that, you know, enjoying time with the family. Um, been obviously doing some workouts. But um, outside of that, watching some movies, um, some puzzles, trying to, you know, um, not be so bored here. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it's hang out with the family to join because I think I told my mom I think it's the longest time I've been at home since probably my freshman year <laughs> so um so it's yeah been an adjustment but super fun to be with them for this, this period of time but yeah how about you what have you guys been well doing? I want to know I want to know first of all when you're doing a puzzle do you go to Jay or Tracy if you need help who's oh, got Tracy. more patience what <laughs> Tracy actually <laughs> he, um, I don't know I think well We've, we've been the only two that have been doing them together. So she's gotten better. The first one was a little bit of a struggle. I had to, you know, guide her through it. But she's been doing better each puzzle we've done. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Jalen's father, Jay, uh, even though Jalen just came off a five-year college basketball career, Jay is the one in rehab trying to get his knee better from a halftime uh, competition <laughs> at one of the high school games. Uh, so, Jalen, yeah. just give us an update on how Jay is doing and if he's as diligent in his rehab as you were in your time at Creighton. Um, yeah, he's doing pretty well. Um, he's walking um, with a cane, but he's hoping to get off the cane soon to walk normal. Going to PT <laughs> twice a week still. Um, has to wear a mask when he goes, but he's actually been having me um, do help him with some of the stretches and, like, the joint mobilization stuff. So, I've been kind of help trying to help him a little bit. So, so yeah, we're he's doing good. Yeah, just slowly going. But um, I think he said the other day at PT it was his first time um, doing a full like rotation on the bike. So that was good for him. Wow. So he can hopefully, yeah, so he can hopefully because he's um, he's a big biker when you go to the gym. So um, so hopefully he can get back to doing that sooner sooner than later. <laughs> okay. And for you, like, what have what have workouts been for you? Obviously, it's a time where you <laughs> don't get to do what you normally do. But how have you tried to stay in shape and stay sharp uh, with mm -hmm. with what's coming up for you? Yeah. So um, Brad, our weights coach, has been so gracious to allow me um, into the team postseason stuff. So I've been um, doing a lot of those workouts that he's sending out. Um, been doing, like you said, the access to some gyms are a little tough for sure. So I've been doing ball handling in my garage. So kind of back to the middle school, elementary school <laughs> days for me. Um, there's a hoop in the neighborhood um, next to mine. So I've been going there. So just trying to do as much as I can um, with the resources that I have at the moment. But it's going pretty well. I have my mom to do some of the weight workouts with me. So um, we keep each other, um, you know, on, on track with that. So it's been, it's been going pretty well so far. <laughs> I would, I, for those of you out there, I would hate to see Jalen in the shoot in the wind because Jalen is a perfectionist. So I'm sure even if she's shooting the ball really well, but the wind is, is forcing her to only make 60% of her shots versus 80, she's, <laughs> uh, she's upset with herself. So. Um, is that the case? Um, yeah, I would say so, especially with the Kansas wind, you know, it's um, <laughs> the first couple days I was, okay, so I hadn't, I took some time off after um, everything had gotten canceled, um, just to kind of get my body back, and the first time I went out there, I was like, all right, I haven't been out here in a second to shoot, it's also, the, the wind is also a factor, and, you know, my mom was also rebounding for me, so, you know, <laughs> for a little stuff, <laughs> but, um, but so, yeah, the first day I was like, all right, I can't shoot joke. Like, obviously, you know, me, like I said, like you said, being a perfectionist. But then I have like, all right, there's so many factors tying into right now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. I just got to 
keep that in mind. But, how would you rate um, how would you rate your mom Tracy as a passer? Oh gosh, this is tough. Um it was funny because the first couple of times she went out there with me, I was like, you know, mom, I really appreciate it, but I probably could do better rebounding for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say she's a, a solid C. I'll give her I'll give her a C. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She should probably do <laughs> that and run. Yeah, I would yeah. say so. I told uh, Jackson and I went to the park yesterday and did some shooting, and it was windier than it had been. I said, you know, these are the days when you work on ball handling and layups. Yeah. Because when you work on, so I, that's just the advice. Not that I should ever give you shooting advice, but when you're outdoors and it's windy, it's you're only going to get frustrated trying to make jump shots. So that's a good day for ball. The windier it is, the more you work on layups and ball handling. Yep. Have you have you figured that out, or do you still try to shoot yeah. when it's super windy? Um, no, not when it's super windy. Yeah, if there's a little wind, I'll I'll try to just so I can get some shots up. But sure. for the most part, yeah, especially it's been it's actually the last couple of days hasn't been bad here, but last week it was a little rough in terms of the weather. So, um, so yeah, so just trying to do what I can with that. <laughs> okay, good. All right, well, let's throw. We we've had some. Uh, so people reach out and ask some, uh, throw us some questions. So let's uh, let's okay. kind of dive into that. So Josh Breeden wants to know, is there, you know, we've got the WNBA draft coming up a week from Friday. Um, I've seen at least two mock drafts where you're projected to be picked, and we're all really hopeful that that, that ends up being a reality, and I know you are. And, um, but uh, is, there, is there a WNBA player, Josh wants to know, that you would compare your game to and do you have a dream team or a dream a dream scenario huh that's tough um let me think i would say dream as far as a dream team goes you know anyone that'll anyone that'll let me play for <laughs> um yeah. yeah you know just if i get the opportunity to showcase what i can do um and if a team allows me to do that then that's the team that i want to play for so um, I would say that in terms of um, dream team and a player. That's tough. Um, you know, I, I was trying to look and see, like, three-point percentage-wise, um, defensive-wise. Um, I, I don't know. What What do you think? Who do you think? Ooh. Yeah. Who do I think? Um, <clears throat> wow. Uh, how about this one, Natisha Heideman? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we I both can three pretty well, but I, I a little longer than her. Um, yeah. In terms okay. Of wise. Um, <laughs> but, um, I would say. Okay, let's see. Um, I would say three point percentage wise, or like three point wise. I feel like Kayla McBride's a good three point shooter. Yeah. So I would say Dewana Bonner is link like lengthy and obviously yeah. she's super tall, but she uses her her length very well um, defensively. And so I don't know. I feel like I may be a mix between both of them in terms of like here's Kayla McBride height, here's Dewana Bonner, <laughs> and I can right in the middle there. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. that feels why. <laughs> yeah, we played against Kayla McBride. Before, before you got here, I think she was a, I don't know what year she was, but we played uh, at their place and then they came back and played at our place. So, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Put you on the spot. Um, what was your favorite moment from this past season? Do you have a favorite moment? Um, let's see. Or moment? I would, I would say, um, obviously the senior day game was super fun. Um, very emotional game all around <laughs> but I think it was super special um especially to share it with you coaches and the teammates um I think that was just like 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 I said super special um but also I think that the Paul game at the Paul when we beat them um you know we had gone through a bunch of um, some injuries this year um Peyton and I were both out that game and to see everyone like rally with each other um to beat the number 11 team at that time um was just super fun and to see also Olivia 
um, you know, go off in her in her home state uh, was super fun to see for her. So I think that was also um, also just a super fun game to be a part of, even though I didn't play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for those of you out there, that I think that shows you what kind of teammate that Jalen was. That one of the two games she referenced was a game in which she didn't play. Um, now, on the flip side, she scored 43 in the other game. So there's a <laughs> so for sure. And 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 you know, to follow up, I, I've never been a part of a senior today game that was that was that perfect in terms of just every scenario that that could have you know been realized was realized and it was a relaxing enough lead that we kind of were in a good position the whole game but it wasn't a blowout so we could keep you in the game to to be able to get to 43 and Morgan Turner who hadn't played a minute all year hits a three as a senior and first you know first and only shot of the season and Olivia does her Olivia dance and makes her the last basket of her home career um, so it was just a, it was really a special day. Yes, it was. <laughs> so um, plan for you, um, Mickey Moriarty was wondering what you're looking forward to in the 2021-2022 season. Oh, just not not having to have you to coach. <laughs> 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 um, it's crazy though. You you know, with we didn't have we did not have a a player in the class below you it's uh, you know Morgan came in as a as a fourth year player to join you and Olivia as fourth year players um, and you guys were all three then fifth year five you know five year players we did not have a four year player we we had two scholarships in that class we offered some guards that we were interested in and we kind of said hey we're maybe only going to have you know, sign one, and, and then we ended up not signing anybody in that class, and um, it ended up work. You know, from from the standpoint of your red shirt and Olivia's red shirt, it ended up working out really well that way. I think it, you know, um, but uh, so and, and really only only two players in the class behind you, uh, three counting Gracie, who then took a red shirt. So next year we'll have, uh, you know, I think the 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 biggest experience that we have will be in the backcourt with Tatum and Temi, fourth year players who who both played a lot, um, dynamic, and I think they've they've learned a lot from you guys in terms of, you know, how to lead. And this is a this is an off season like no other that we've ever had. So I think <clears throat> I think those those guys, those experienced people, you know, reaching out and making sure that our five incoming freshmen are are somehow more comfortable whenever it is that we get back to a little bit of normalcy, because it's not going to be a summer like we've had in the past where we could, you know, maybe have as much access to our incoming freshmen, maybe have them get as comfortable with their future teammates, their well current teammates as they've been able to do in the past. So I think leadership in the off season is, is important, but I think those, those two along with Gracie and some of our juniors um, can handle that. But uh you know, really, you know, the fact that Morgan didn't play this year, we lost. Obviously, you were a great player, and Liv was probably a sneaky, valuable player. A lot of a lot of people who watched us play maybe understood her value, but some people probably didn't understand her her value. So, um, you know, but big losses. But also, I think, you know, we got – we have our, our freshmen got some experience. Our sophomores our, – our sophomores who are – now going to be juniors, got even more experience. So, and and really, we had a a team that that had a. We played a really tough schedule. Our non-conference schedule was tough. Our league was probably a little better than I had thought, even. Um, so, just a lot of good experience. Um, and I think next year will be, um, the league with with Connecticut coming in is only is only going to get better. Uh, that'll get us to twenty conference games. It'll kind of um, take away some of our freedom to schedule in a non-conference, which is, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'll maybe know, <laughs> have a better opinion in a year or two as to whether that's a good thing or bad thing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we certainly have enough pieces coming back and, and showed uh, enough, enough of our players have 
should have enough confidence and 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 belief that they can play and not just play but but be successful at at the level that we aspire to be successful. Mm-hmm. Cool. And also from Josh, what was your favorite moment from this past season? Yeah, I well, I still you stole the one, which was which was Georgetown and Senior Day, and just the you know how <clears throat> I think you know when you, when you have a basketball season and you every game's important and and and, and you want to respect the journey and enjoy the journey and um, but to have it to have it end on a senior day that was that perfect was was really special. I think that was something that uh, that I'll remember a long time. And I think the other part that the, the one you didn't mention is Cancun. I felt like we played. First of all, we had a good time. I hope. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure the players had an even better time than I did. Um, but you know, to beat a West Virginia team who was rated at the time and then a really good Temple team um, and get to do it in that, um, you know, we had a lot of family members travel and I think that makes it even special. And, you know, that, that resort was pretty cool. <laughs> and it just seems like we're a, we're a long way from having that, uh, that kind of experience. But I think that was a really, a really great trip for, for the team and the, and the staff and families who, who got to go to, to that. Yeah, I would agree. It was super fun, super fun time. And like you said, two wins made it even better. So, <laughs> yeah. So we have a question from um, assistant coach Carly's husband, Nate Berger, has uh, asked me to, uh, we could ask you to ask a question, but his question is, when did I think that Jalen had the potential uh, to be as special of a player as as you ended up becoming and uh i had a couple minutes to think about that before we jumped on this call and you know really i i that's a tough question because i think there are there are moments that you that you feel that but you might feel that with other players or you might and sometimes you're wrong but i think um for me probably the first time I knew you could potentially be this good would be, you know, probably the latter half of your sophomore year when I feel like you really, I mean, obviously you're, when you were the freshman of the year in your redshirt freshman year and, the, and you showed glimpses of, of, of being a really good player, but I think there's a difference between really good and special. And I think that the, the special that, that he's alluding to was probably more really the back half of your, of your sophomore year, um, just because at that point, I think I realized all the things, or at least as a staff, we realized all the things that you could do and all the areas where you were valuable, not just, I mean, uh, there were things you could do when you got here and we knew that, but just the, how complete a player you were kind of became obvious to me um, the second half of your sophomore year when you got more confident, you'd gotten stronger, you could shoot the ball for sure, but I think your defensive awareness and your understanding of how you could impact the game defensively. And then you be, you know, we asked you to become a better, you know, we said we need you to score more Jalen and you had this uh, sometimes you earlier in your career, you deferred a little, which is normal. That's what younger players mostly do. Um, but I think you really, you really gave us that, uh, that idea that you could be special uh, that back half of your sophomore year. Cool. Well, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Do you have anything for me? We have another uh, question we can get to? Let's see. Uh, we can see Oh, I got a question. Which... I got a question for you. This is, I think, a great, <laughs> this is a great insight into what into you probably more than it is to me because it goes to taste and preference. <laughs> Scott Bankers, who works in our uh, strength and conditioning area, wants you to identify who you think is a better dancer between Peyton Brodsky and yours truly, <laughs> Jim Flannery. Um, okay, so like you said, taste and preference. So I got to break it down to, um, you know, 
I would say smoothness um, of moves, <laughs> the move hit. Um, let's see what else. <laughs> um, you know, music has has a um, rhythm, and music, you know, has a has a play in that as well. Um, so you know, I I think sorry, Flan, I got to go with Peyton. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know, I think she just you know hits the moves a little smoother. Um, I know after playing noon ball, you know, you get a little, a little sore, a little stiff. And I think sometimes that translates to your dance moves. So, yeah. um, you know, maybe if you, you know, stretch out a little bit, get warmed up before, before starting dancing. I think, you know, if you guys had a dance off, you can maybe pull, pull, you know, one out of three, you know, two out of six, something like that from Peyton. But <laughs> right now, I, think, I think Peyton's got you in that aspect. Are there- is there anybody who wants me to dance? I mean, is there any? Yeah. Okay, that's that's tough to hear, but I I welcome the feedback. I think you're I think you're spot on in terms of my ability to stretch out. Um, a lot of times, I think that, that that hurts me. So, for instance, after a game, when you guys have been running up and down and you're loose, and I've been sitting a lot of the game, because you know how you know how I am in games. I sit, I'm never animated. Um, I'm very demure and and uh, soft spoken. Um, so I'm not I'm I'm when I get in the locker room after a after a two hour basketball game, I'm I'm not I'm not limber, I'm not stretched out. And so when I just break into a dance move, I'm I'm probably not giving you my best. Yeah, yeah. You know. Like you said, yeah, so you're so just <laughs> so calm during the game. You know, you got to get get riled up a little bit more maybe. Yeah, and then yeah. Dance, yeah. Well, you know, hit hit a little different. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Tom Sanders wants to know, you know, what are your future plans? I mean, what, you know, what this this basketball thing that you got going, what what uh, what kind of time frame do you, do you have an idea how long you want to play? And, you know, let's say you – we we all hope that you make the WNBA, but let's say let's say you don't make the WNBA. What are your what are your plans? You know, for the for the next couple of years, and what, how long can you see yourself playing? Yeah, so um, like you said, if I didn't make the WNBA, I would um, probably go over during the NBA WNBA off season. Um, so that's for those that don't know, it's very much in, like. Um, the collegiate basketball season so i'd go over there august september come back in april ish may ish um and so i think i'd do that um for sure that's what that's what my plan would be whether i do make a WNBA or not too um if for those of you that don't know that as well um in the past i was uh, probably 80 percent of WNBA players i would say 80 or more played um overseas in the off season but now with the new um collective bargaining agreement um you know some of those some of those players might be able to stay home now in the off season um so but as um as a younger player you know to get more experience and stuff like that I would probably play over there in the off season um and so so that would be you know where hopefully somewhere somewhere cool somewhere people could visit possibly um but that'd be my plans um you know, I, I think basketball in terms of um, how long I can do it, I would just say, um, you know, as long as I can um, and at, at, at the highest level that I can, um, you know, not to diss on um, Carmelo, but, um, you know, he... <laughs> you can he, diss on Carmelo. You know, yeah, he doesn't know me, so it's fine. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, um, he obviously had a great career, and then he started to kind of, you know, dwindle off and he couldn't kind of accept that I would say um and so I think um you know especially obviously he played at a great a high level and it's probably hard for him to come to terms with that um but I think when I begin to come to terms with that I think I, I will be okay and um hopefully it's not within the next couple of years hopefully it's longer than that but um I think you know when I when I'm not able to I can um and um you know help my team out if I'm start start becoming a burden instead of helpful you know I think that that'll be the time when um I'll lace it up but yeah hopefully like I said I can do it for um an extended period of time 
um, and kind of have it be my first career, I would say, out of the the, the hopefully only a couple that I um, will do in my lifetime. So, yeah. so yeah. Well, good. And I know you've used I know you've used Bree Rollerson as a resource. Bree is, uh, uh, you know, a couple of years out of Creighton and has played overseas. And um, I know she's been a good resource for you. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So um, Bree, you know, I played with Bree for two years, I think. Um, two years, right? I feel like I've known her for longer than that. <laughs> I've played for longer than that, but um, but yeah, she's been playing in Germany the last three years, and she comes back every summer, and we work out together. Um, hang out. She she called she's called me while she's been over in Germany. Um, you know, just talking about the experiences she's had, um, the the game how the game is different, and just kind of guiding me through, especially the stuff right now. You know, agent like picking an agent, um, different leagues and stuff like that. So, um, super help. She's been super helpful in this process, and hopefully, you know, it's in this next year. Hopefully, we're playing close so we can you know hang out with each other and see each other. Um, more so than we would be in the summer, especially this summer, because who knows, <laughs> who knows what we're going to be able to do. But, um, but yeah, she's been a super helpful resource through everything. So super grateful for her um, to, you know, kind of give me some wisdom on on how this process goes. Good, good. And for those of you who don't know, I mean, Jalen was a was a multi sport athlete in in high school. Um, so I've had a couple of conversations with, you know. WNBA coaching staffs who are interested in in Jalen and one of the things I've told them is that I think you're still I think you're still young enough in the game in terms of of development that you're going to you're going to improve. I mean you you played high level volleyball and you were really good in track in high school and I think you know in some ways that helped you in college. You know I, I we we enjoy and and push multi sport athletes. I think that's a good thing. Um, but I also think it means at the end of the day that you have <clears throat> maybe an, even more of an upside because you haven't just been basketball, basketball, basketball since you were in, you know, fifth or sixth or seventh grade. And, you know, even though you're a fifth year senior, you're still only 22, you have got that summer birthday. So you're, you know, there's, there's some things that I think, uh, will be attractive to, to teams in terms of, of looking at <clears throat> where you are versus you know, even where you can be in the next, uh, you know, two, three, four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like you said, um, you know, being a multi-sport athlete, I think someone asked me that question, um, like, I think it was like last week. And um, even in terms of um, like training wise and injury wise, you know, you're not moving the same muscles, you're not doing the same stuff like repetition wise. And so um, especially coming in like that first and second year, um, I hadn't been doing, you know, repetitive basketball stuff nonstop. And so, um, like I, like I said, injury wise, you know, it allowed me to not get those like nagging, um, you know, repetition kind of type injuries. And then training wise, some different movements that I used in volleyball, um, like, like she would always tell me, you know, blocking instead of coming down, try to straight, stay straight up like volleyball. So different things yeah. like that. Um, you know, my layups, you know, were, were like high jump. Uh, high jump and so different things like that like they all kind of translated within each other like you said so um so yeah super super fun um to obviously be able to play three sports but then kind of hone in and specialize in this one in college great okay one final one final question and we'll get you out of here the WNBA draft is friday april 17th what are your plans for that night yeah, I think, you know, we're probably just going to um, watch it down, downstairs on a big screen, probably order some pizza, try not to be too stressed. <laughs> um, I guess my mom and dad are going to be down here with me, um, you know, just see how it goes. Um, like you said, be hopeful. Um, but then if not, you know, just um, take it as stuff I can improve uh, that I can pr improve on and just get back to work and try to, you know, just make the summer um, one of growing and learning and hopefully can translate that into um, overseas season this upcoming year. But yeah, just try, like I said, try to try to chill out, not be stressed about it, order some pizza, kind of make it like a, like a, you know, like it would be the March Madness of this year, but. Nice. Will there be adult, will there be adult beverages or kids beverages at that uh, pizza party? 
Um, I would say <laughs> my dad will definitely be in the adult beverages. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll be, yeah, I'll be just drinking like some soda or something. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, <laughs> David, it's been great to catch up to you. We thank you for all that you've done for and meant to Creighton. And obviously we'll catch up again sometime soon. Yes, and I appreciate you and everyone for allowing me to be at Creighton and this opportunity to, you know, kind of show everyone, um, tell everyone about this last season with you and the future. And um, yeah, I can't wait to catch up with you and the team again. Hopefully we can see each other soon. Um, but if not, you know, we can keep doing things like this to catch up with everyone. <laughs> Sounds good. So this has been the off season with Jalen Agnew and Jim Flannery. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>